Carolina Bays were discovered not long after man achieved flight. After the airplane was invented and pilots were flying along the Carolina coast, they noticed that there were thousands and thousands of very similar egg-shaped depressions pockmarking our coastal plain, all oriented in the same direction, northwest to southeast. Nobody's really sure how Carolina Bays were formed, but <laughs> it doesn't mean there's any shortage of hypotheses. They range from meteor showers, in other words, objects from outer space bombarding our coastal plain and creating all these patterned wetlands, to much more accepted theories like the gradual theory of formation that involves the groundwater and the underlying bedrock sinking and coastal currents combined with even the wind blowing from a predominantly southwesterly direction during the ice ages. All these things coming together to form these incredible Carolina Bays that we see today. They vary in size from less than an acre to hundreds and hundreds of acres. Lake Waccamaw, one of the largest natural lakes in the Carolinas, is in fact a Carolina Bay. Regardless of where they came from, these Carolina Bays shelter wildlife ranging in size from black bears down to the tiniest of insects. Thousands of species make their home here, and even with plants, you find more species, rare species associated with these Carolina Bays than any other habitat type in South Carolina. One thing's for certain, Carolina Bays today are threatened. They're at risk. They're at risk because they no longer are protected as wetlands under the Clean Water Act. A Supreme Court decision back in 2002 removed isolated wetlands from receiving the same protection as those that are connected to navigable bodies of water. What this has meant is lots of Carolina bays are being converted. They're being drained, converted to farmland. They're also threatened by urbanization as our neighborhoods spread out into the wildlands that once were just home to wildlife in South Carolina. And it spells disaster for all those species that depend on isolated wetlands. Carolina bays today are in need of our help and our support and even restoration. It's just amazing to me to think that something that happened so long ago in the geologic past could be so important to the life that we see in South Carolina today.